Like we saw with the number of neutrons, the number of nuclides in the core follows the same sources minus losses relationship. That is, the time derivative of the number of nuclides in the core is equal to the sources of those nuclides minus the losses. Let's take the case where we want to know how many nuclides we have lost or depleted. If the nuclide happens to be fissile, this is also known as burnup since the fission releases energy. A simple expression of the depletion equation is dNi dt equals minus Ni sigma A phi, where Ni is the number density of the ith nuclide in units of one per centimeter cubed. R is the position in space in centimeters or the location. T is the time in seconds. Sigma A is the microscopic absorption cross-section in units of centimeters squared or barns. E is the energy of the incident neutron in MeV, and phi is the normal flux in neutrons per centimeter squared per second. Let's imagine a beam of neutrons with an incident flux phi hitting a thin foil of material, as seen in this figure. The depletion equation tells you how many of the original nuclides remain in the foil after a time t. The reason for using a foil is that it prevents criticality and it is not a multiplying medium, because any new neutrons that are created leave the foil just as soon as they are created. For purposes of burnup and depletion here, we'll average over energy and position, leaving only the time dependence. Thus, dNi of T dt is equal to minus dNi of T times the microscopic absorption cross-section times the flux at time T. We can rearrange this to be dNi of T divided by Ni of t equal to minus sigma a phi times dt. Now let's integrate both sides from time t equals zero to some time t in the future. Doing so will yield the natural log Ni of t divided by the initial concentration Ni of zero on the left hand side equal to minus the microscopic absorption cross-section times the integral from 0 to t of the flux. Exponentiating both sides, we see that the concentration of the ith nuclide at some time t in the future is equal to its initial concentration times the exponential e to the negative sigma a times the integral from 0 to t of the flux dt prime. If the flux happens to be constant such that the flux at time t is just equal to some value for the flux, then the integral goes away and we're left with the concentration at some time t in the future is equal to the initial concentration times e to the negative sigma a phi t. This can be seen in the following equation. Also note that the fluence, which is defined by uppercase phi and has units of neutrons per centimeter squared, is defined as the time integral of the flux, phi of t prime dt prime. So in other words, the fluence is a representation of how many neutrons a material has been exposed to since some time t equals zero. Therefore, for a unit mass of material m, the burnup is given as the ratio of the energy released per fission times the fission cross-section times the fluence divided by the mass of the material. Burnup can be measured in units of MeV per gram or more commonly megawatt days per kilogram or gigawatt days per ton.